So lately, it's been Sephora this, Sephora that on my channel. And because I've been so focused on Sephora makeup, I have neglected some of my PR. So today, I'm just going to do a full face of testing new makeup. Some stuff is from Sephora, some stuff is definitely not. So we have a good mixture here. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to pull my hair back. And I have a lot of new and exciting items to try. And then some aren't new to the market, but they're new to me. I got to dig through my PR makeup drawers. I've been reorganizing them lately, so I'm kind of re-inspired by all the new makeup I get to try. So we're going to start off with an affordable primer from Catrice. This is the Grip and Last Putty Primer. I love putty primers. The e.l.f. one is my favorite, so I can't wait to try this one. So it looks like it does come with an applicator, so I guess we'll try it. Let's see. It is definitely harder. I feel like I definitely want to warm it in between my fingers. So, oh, it feels kind of sticky. It does say, obviously, it is a grab, grab, <laughs> grip and last primer. So I think it's supposed to be kind of sticky. It feels, yeah, it, it doesn't feel like it's creamy or anything. So if you have drier skin, you definitely want to use something hydrating. Before this, I used you know, my daily moisturizer. So that's what's hydrating my skin right now. But this does feel drying. So if anything, this might be good for oily skin. It's gonna take a few applications for me to actually see if this does anything. But for now, because they have drier skin, I feel like this is kind of sucking the life out of my face a little bit. It's supposed to grip and last, so I think it might be doing its job, but I don't think this is the type of consistency that I prefer for my skin type, so we'll see. I definitely will be testing it some more. Now, for base, I've had this sitting in my collection for a bit, and I've always wanted to try it. This is from Iconic London. It's the Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint, which I actually have heard great things about, so I want to finally try this. I think Iconic London is so underrated as a brand. So I'm gonna use the shade Neutral Light. I do have more of a neutral undertone to my skin. Hopefully this is the right shade because they only sent me shades in the light family. Oh, very, oh gosh, a lot came out there. I think I put too much out on there. Okay, this is not a bad color at all. So I'm just gonna blend it out with my finger. And this is gonna help get the smoothest application if you work it out with your finger. It's going to get into the crevices of the face, pores, lines. Uh, I think it leaves the smoothest application on the skin and the most even coverage as well. So we're gonna start off like that. And then I'm gonna use my beauty sponge. This one is from Refer. Push it out. Let me get a little closer so you guys can see how this is sitting on the skin honestly it looks really pretty and it feels quite light there is a little bit of a glow that it gives it's quite natural looking it says it's smoothing like it blurs the skin i don't necessarily know about that quite yet but i do like the way that it looks be careful when squeezing the product out because a lot really did come out it is pretty runny i believe i've heard good things about this I haven't heard many people talking about it because Iconic London just isn't as popular with the people that I watch normally, but I think I've heard some good things, so I'm excited about this. Okay, and then I'm gonna push into the skin. And obviously with these products, I'm gonna have to test them with other products that I'm more familiar with to really see how things go down and how they work but I will have that in speed reviews, which I am filming a new speed reviews video tomorrow. Obviously, none of these are gonna be in that one, but I'm gonna be able to update you on a number of items that I have been thoroughly testing. So I think we're gonna leave that there. Honestly, this looks really good. It definitely gives like a lighter medium coverage. It's not covering everything on my face. Like you can definitely still see my freckles. I still have a little bit of redness peeking through, but not anything that bothers me. It looks light on the skin. It has a natural finish. I think it looks good, but hopefully it wears well so that we can have a winner. Now let's move on to eyebrows. I have these from Koki, which is another affordable option. Funny enough, these actually got sent to my parents' house. Sometimes, like with PR packages, when you move around, 
the brands don't update the addresses. So I ended up taking these home and I did use these, but we're gonna use them today as well. So these are the Koki eyebrow pencils and I'm going to use the shade dark brown, I think. I really like the packaging of them. They feel very lightweight, a little on the cheap side, quality wise, but it it is cheap. <laughs> but the points to it is very thin. So I'm just gonna start off by going under, fill in this. It's a bit creamier than I prefer, but it's getting the job done. I did use this at my parents' house, but I don't remember my thoughts because it's been a couple weeks. Then I like to push my eyebrows down, then fill in down here, and then we kind of fill in the center. So this particular shade, using the dark brown, it does have some warmth to it, which I don't really like for my brows. It really stands out how much cooler of a tone my eyebrows are, but that's okay. This is over blending just a wee bit more than I prefer, but fills in the brows, it gets the job done. I'm not mad at it. And Koki, I believe, is based in Baltimore, which I really like that aspect because I live very, well, not anymore, but I'm from very close to Baltimore. And then I have this new brow gel from Ardell. It's called the Brow Glue, and it's an instant lamination lift and styling tool. And I have had a few products from Ardell for eyebrows that, that I think are really good. Not a lot of people use their makeup products, but they have some gems. So they have this styling tool here, and then you use this to kind of lay the brows down. And then here's the actual product. So let's see, it kind of has like a bluish color to it. Do you see that? And I don't love this applicator. I like them a little longer. This one's kind of, kind of stubby, you know? And then I'm gonna brush it out with this, kind of press it down. And you can use this spatula side and it will like literally stick them down. It is like a glue for the eyebrows. It's not too crazy feeling like some of the products that I've used that are similar to this, but we have to see if the brows hold. That's the big thing. So I'm actually gonna brush these up more than I normally would. Oh, and it's weird, like one side of this is flat and then the other side is rounded. Interesting, I think I prefer the flat side. I think it directs the hair better. So normally I don't like my brows sticking up quite so much. I prefer more of a style like this. But this is all set down so I can't even them out. But I just wanna see if my brows fall because I do have very particular eyebrows with eyebrow gels. So I want to see if these actually make my brows stay. So I brushed the ends down a little bit I'm using the spatula to kind of press them down. I mean, this is real deal stick as of now. So we'll see if it actually stays because sometimes with these products, I find my brows will eventually just fall down. So hopefully, I know the brows look different, but it's for testing purposes, okay? <laughs> Now, I was gonna do eyeshadow first. I normally do for fallout, but then I realized I'm not testing eyeshadows, like powder eyeshadows today. So I can just go ahead and finish the face. I got some packages that I've been collecting from Lawless, and I've really enjoyed some of the products that I've tried from the brand. I think they have amazing lip products in particular, but I'm gonna try this Conceal the Deal Full Coverage Concealer. I think I'm gonna try the shade Linen. I might have to mix in a little bit of Marcona though. So let's see. We're gonna start off with linen, which is a bit bright Okay, more than a bit. I've noticed my under eyes lately have been a little blue Normally, I don't have bad discoloration, but maybe I'm aging <laughs> And then yeah, this one is very yellow. I mean, I didn't order these shades for myself This is just what the brand sent to me because these were given in PR So I don't know exactly what the shade range looks like, but I don't love the colors that I was sent Which is fine. Bikers can't be choosers. We'll make it work <laughs> So I'm just gonna press this in Did brighten though with the selection that they gave me so like you see that? Let's go again. It is kind of drying down fast. I would say it's not the creamiest feeling concealer that I've used, but that might help with longevity. There are pros to concealers that behave like this. It definitely is light on the skin in terms of the thickness of it. Like it's very light, it's not thick. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do one more layer. 
I didn't give too much coverage in this area, so I'm gonna use the Marcona shade, because it has more yellow, and I think it will do better in the inner corner for me. Okay, so, so far, not a full coverage concealer. Definitely gets the job done. I feel like, hopefully, this has lasting power to it because it's it's a little drier, so you wanna work fast. But it looks pretty good so far, but only time will tell with this. I do have some cream products that I'm gonna put on before powder, starting off with these Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Bronzer. I'm hoping that these are good. One, because I didn't like the tinted moisturizer blushes. They weren't for me, and I also had a comment from one of you guys saying they were patchy, so hopefully they work out for me. I have the shade Sunbeam number three and Sunlight number four. I think we're gonna start off with the lighter shade Sunbeam number three. I'm gonna put it on a palette. Okay, I'm gonna, I need to clean this palette, don't I? Dot it on. I like this shade. It has like a some coolness to it, which is good for more contoury. I feel like the other shade that I have is more warm, so they might be good mixed together. I'm gonna start off with just this half of the face to see what we're working with. I'm using a Morphe M536 to press it in. And because I was warned that it can get patchy, I'm trying to work really carefully and just get this to be the best that it can be, right? And it's not blending out great. <laughs> the areas that I applied at my forehead, I do have to kind of push it out because it's leaving a little patch behind, you see? How it just isn't blending into the skin super smooth. But once blended out, love this color. It's a good color. Let me get some a little closer to the hairline. I'm really bad about that. I know this is a pet peeve of people's when you don't blend it into the hairline. I just, I don't blend mine into the hairline. It's not great. Not a good habit to have. And then on the other side, I'm gonna try number four, Sunlight, which is more warm. I know we'll have two different colors, but it's fine. We really gotta test it, okay? Now this number four shade definitely has some more glimmer particles in it as well. Hmm, I think both shades have their own kind of thing going on that makes them lovely. Okay, then we're gonna blend it out. Like you see how it, it takes some going back and forth to blend it out. So it's definitely not the smoothest blend. I'm trying to use patting motions as much as I can, but you kind of gotta slide it out to get it to blend. Yeah, this definitely has more warmth to it. Both shades are very, very pretty with whatever is left. I'm just gonna mix both of the shades together and kind of go over a little bit to hopefully even them out. I mean, I like the way that I applied this. I think if I applied this in a different way, I could see difficulties arising uh, and you do need to work fast with this. So this is not, to me, performing like a high-end makeup product. I think it looks great and I don't have any issues with it, but the application isn't as easy, which is why I don't think it's applying like a high-end product, but it does look really good. I don't notice that any being patchy or messing up the makeup underneath, but I do think you have to be careful and quick with application, but I like this. I like the way that it looks. I'll continue to test this with other products to see, but so far, I think it looks great, but application, be careful. For blush, I'm so excited. I got this insane PR package from Juvia's Place. They just launched liquid blushes. They literally sent me 12 shades. I'm gonna go, I think, with a basic peach color. Let me see what options they have. I mean, they have everything ranging from orange to purple to red, just how Juvia's Place does. And it took me a while to get into Juvia's Place. I've never been a huge fan of their eyeshadows. I don't know why, I just haven't. Um, I need to try some new eyeshadow palettes from them because it's been a while. My opinion might change. Okay, so I think we might go a little bit more bold on the eyes, so I'm gonna play it safe, but I will continue to test more shades because they just, they have so much that I think are gonna be fun. But we're gonna play it safe with Soft Tulip because I think I'm gonna go green on the eyes. So let's try this. Actually, I think that might be a little bit more, I don't know, baby doll than I want. Let me look at a different shade. I kind of really want to try Perky Poppy though. I was eyeing it, but I thought it might be too dramatic. It might be. 
it really might be. I'm gonna try it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. Knowing Juvia's place, I think this might be very pigmented. So I'm just going to go like that to start. I'm going to use the same Morphe brush. going to... Oh, yeah, quite pigmented. Which is great because Juvia's place is so inclusive with their shade range. Oh, that's blending out beautifully. I definitely was very timid the amount I put on there at first but you can definitely make it work on a lighter skin tone but I feel like what I'm getting from this is this will definitely work for a wide range of skin tones you just got to be careful if you have a lighter complexion and then you can be a little bit more generous with a deeper complexion gosh how fun is this I love this shade and I don't notice it breaking up anything underneath now I don't have any powder on my face so I'll try more of these with some powder. I definitely applied a little bit more on this side, but these are blending beautifully. And Juvia's Place is on the more affordable side. It's kind of like in between mid-range and affordable, but it has like a soft dew here. Ooh, I like these. I think these are beautiful. It definitely more pigmented um i wish i had applied less on this side but we'll make it work these are beautiful and then i do have a liquid highlight which you know i'm not normally a fan of but i finally am trying a different shade of the rare beauty liquid illuminator because i've talked so much trash about how i don't like mesmerize so i'm gonna give out shine a chance to see if i like these highlights better in a different shade. With mesmerize i just felt like my skin literally ate it up so I need to see with this kind of more golden shade how it makes me feel. I'm just going to use my sponge to push it in. This one is a little bit too gold for my preference though. It's pretty. I mean, I just don't love liquid highlights in general, but I really felt like with the mesmerized shade, my skin would just absorb it and it would disappear. I'm not getting that vibe from this. It's not the prettiest liquid highlighter that I've used. I've had a few that I just, I like a little bit more. Like Tarte has a really, really good one. That's one that I very much enjoy. Beauty Pie probably has my favorite liquid highlighter. So this still isn't top of the market to me. Again, I feel like my skin is kind of soaking it up. It's just not my favorite formula. I give it another chance, but it's very natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I. Side note on the eyebrows still going strong. I wish they were even now because I was expecting this to fall, but the eyebrow product has set down and it's not moving. Now it is like a glue almost. <laughs> so if you don't like those heavy duty eyebrow things to glue the brows down, you won't like this. Like I don't like this on an everyday basis, but it is really holding, which is what a lot of brow gels like this don't do. Like, this is better than the next one. And then for powder, to get some shine off my face, I have another Lawless product. These are the Perfecting Powders Skin Smoothing Powders. And you can actually use these as powder foundations or just to set. I think today we'll use it just to set, but I definitely plan on using this as a powder foundation off camera or a different day. So I'm going to use the shade Light, and this is what it looks like. It's just... A really simple packaging and then it has this where you can apply it with the sponge if you want. I'm going to use this multi-use powder brush from Lawless as well. And I'm going to set my under eyes with it. We'll do half of the face. Oh, this does blur. Love to see it. This light color though is not very light. I was expecting it to be more brightening since it is called light. But it's kind of the exact shade as my skin tone, which is not bad foundation powder wise. It's just usually when I get the shade light, it's a little lighter than this. Oh, but this is blurring. This might be a little too heavy to set the under eyes with. But here you can see it definitely blurred in this area. I think it looks pretty, but it does look a little heavy and dry on the under eyes. So I would have to use a lighter powder than I normally wear. But in terms of setting the face, I think it made the face look better. And I do plan on testing this with other products and it's on, on its own to really get the full effect with it. And it looks nice. I do like the way that this set the face. 
not bad. I feel like overall with all of the product that I have, my face and makeup, complexion products, yada, 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 is looking a little, a little heavy. Nothing terrible, but interesting. I like it. Okay, so I had to go back and fix my brows since I realized the Ardell brow over here was not going anywhere. Now, I keep talking about this thing, but be careful adding other layers because then it starts to become a mess. But dang, this really is brow glue. The this is more brow glue than the IBH, I'm telling ya. So for eyes, we're keeping it pretty simple, all cream and liquid products. I uh, am so blessed. I got the, a package of the Hourglass Voyeur eyeshadow sticks in the mail, every single shade, I believe, if not a lot of shades. So I want to try the green shade. I was feeling these out on camera. They don't seem to be super pigmented. They seem like they're gonna sheer out, but that's what we're testing today. So I'm gonna try try the shade Aurora and I don't have really anything on my eyelid just left over concealer that I'm pushing out so let's see this is Aurora so yeah it's definitely more on the sheer side I was looking through the other colors I don't think any of them really have depth to them they're all giving that one and done kind of eyeshadow look but very pretty I can definitely see this being great for everyday quick color it's just it's so sad but eyeshadow palettes just aren't as trendy right now you know i'm still doing my eyeshadow looks but they just aren't so i think this is a great product for those of you that aren't into eyeshadow right now just to get something fun and interesting on the eyelid that's still really simple and easy to do i'll always love my eyeshadow palettes though don't get it twisted <laughs> but it's all about complexion nowadays. Liquid blushes are hot. Yeah, that's definitely more sheer than I thought it was going to be, but it's very pretty. We'll have to see how these last. Going to pop it on the lower lash line as well. Want to dig into another color. Now, these are very creamy, so hopefully they stay on their own because that would be really great. Like this, just as a look, is very pretty. I'm going to use the shade Moon, which looks to be just like a champagne shade. I'm gonna put this on the inner half of the eye. Definitely more sheer. All of these I think are just gonna give a little glow to the eyelid, which is not normally my style, but it is very pretty. I'm gonna use my finger to blend it out. It's very easy and creamy to apply. And then I'm gonna amp it up a little bit. So I've been dying to try these. I just haven't had the opportunity. These are from the Legend of Korra collection with ColourPop. So this has been out for a few weeks, but they launched these liquid chrome eyeshadows. So I'm gonna pop a green one on over top because I just, I need to test these. I'm like in between two shades because this one seems a little dramatic. So I'm gonna go with this lighter one in Earth. I'm just gonna do a little bit, but look at this. This is Earth. So let's just put it on the center of the eyelid. This is definitely gonna completely change the vibe of the eye look. I feel like the Hourglass Cream Eyeshadow is almost soaking up this product, so I might need to try it with a powder eyeshadow instead. But I just wanted to see. Yeah, I just think it needs a powder eyeshadow underneath because the cream is eating into it. So it's I think making it look more subtle than it actually is. Okay, noted, not exactly how I wanted this to go, but that's what happens with first impressions. But I, the problem was I wanted to try both of these. I really wanted to try the Hourglass, but I really wanted to try the ColourPop, and I only got two eyeballs on me. Honestly though, the, both of them mixed together. <laughs> it looks really pretty, but I don't think it gives either the cream eyeshadow from Hourglass or the ColourPop liquid shadow a chance to show what they can really do. So I'm just gonna have this pretty green eye look on though. I think it looks really nice. <laughs> and then eyeliner, ColourPop actually reformulated their cream gel eyeliners, which I've talked so much about. They're supposed to be waterproof now. And you know, they have every color under the sun almost. So I'm deciding which shade I want to use. They don't have like a really dark eggplant green though. So I think I'm gonna use Brew Haha, -Ha, which is a super dark brown. Oh wow, these are super creamy. I feel like maybe it's because these are new, but they are really creamy, creamier than the ones I have in my collection right now. Almost too creamy. 
Wow, I gotta be really careful. Like I almost want to take, it's this creamy that I want to take a pencil brush and line it with that instead for more precision. So I'm just gonna try and smudge it into the lashes. I do have some new falsies that I want to try today, so I don't need to be too crazy precise with the liner. I'll have to see if these actually last longer than the older formulation, because I really liked the older formulation too, but they did feel more dry, but I'm wondering if they just felt more dry because they're not as new. And then I'm also gonna tight line, because of how creamy it is, I think it will work good for tight lining. Then I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 208 brush, and I'm gonna use this to kind of smudge out and rework this ColourPop pencil. Love this shade of eyeliner. Okay, easy peasy. Now I haven't decided which lashes I want to use yet. I'm thinking Legacy. So this is from Kiss. They have this collection called the Muses Collection and all of the lashes look beautiful. Like look at this one. Noble S also just looks so stunning. So I think I'm gonna go off camera and do this, but I'm gonna pop on Legacy and then of course mascara. So I'll be right back. Okay, for lashes, we went with Legacy, and I saw that these are handmade with refined faux silk. They look beautiful. This is a great collection from Kiss to pick out. And then you know what I remembered? Well, I forgot, but then I remembered. I actually also have these blush duos from Juvia's Place. They're powder blush, and I have a lot of cheek color on, but I do want to play with these. They sent six different colors over. I'm going to use the shade Volume 6, which is like the warmer orangey tones. Look at that. So they have a lighter matte shade and then a deeper shimmery shade. I'm gonna mix both. I'm trying to go very light-handed though because I don't need any extra color on my cheek, but I <laughs> these look just so beautiful. Like look at that. Okay, I can't speak too much to the quality on this because I'm using such a little amount, but I will start testing these because they look so fun. And again, I think they're gonna be very, very pigmented. So just be careful, but I did want to set my face with a little extra powder anyways. So there we go. Right, but hopefully it fades a little bit. Now for lips, I threw on a Catrice Plumping Lip Liner in the shade What A Doll. I pulled a YSL Beauty lipstick, which I don't remember the last time I tried a YSL Beauty lipstick. This is the shade Rosewood, I believe. Let me see. Nude Lingerie. 015, not Rosewood. It's like a warmer shade, but the packaging is gorgeous. Okay, so let's pop this on. It has like some gold shimmers. It's pretty sheer. Mmm, smells really good. Oh, that's beautiful. I wish it was more orange. It looked a little bit more orange to me, but that's okay. It's fine. The, it doesn't need to match perfectly. And then if you didn't see, Wet n Wild came out with a Sesame Street collection, and I actually gave away most of the stuff in the collection, but I did keep this lip gloss, which I don't really think I need because my lips are already glossy, but I do want to try it. This is in the shade Fun Size, so might as well. Yeah, doesn't smell of anything. It's a lip gloss. <laughs> I just wanted to try it, I don't know. Okay, anyways, this is a look. Give me a second and I will give you guys my final thoughts. Okay, so here's the final look. Honestly, the makeup look is gorgeous. A lot of these products I'm definitely gonna need to test some more, but just first impressions, this Catrice, Grip and Last Putty Primer. It feels pretty drying on my skin, so I don't love it, but it actually might be good for me living in Florida. So we'll see the Iconic London Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint. I didn't notice it looking super blurring, but I thought it looked really nice on this skin. So far, I like it, but we'll see. <laughs> the Lawless Concealer feels a little drying to me. Again, we'll see. It also might last a longer time. A lot of these are we'll see, and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> the Lawless Powder, I'm excited to try it as a foundation powder because it looked pretty smooth as a setting powder. I will say my makeup looks a little heavier on my skin than I prefer, and that might have to do with this powder, so it might be better as a foundation powder. Again, we'll see. The Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Bronzers. I like these. You just gotta work fast with them. The application isn't the greatest, but I thought they looked really good on this skin. I liked the colors. The Juvia's Place Liquid Blush. 
phenomenal and they have an incredible range. I think this might be my favorite product that I tried today. I really, really like it. The Juvia's Place Blush Rouge Palette. I only use a little bit, but I think they have amazing color ranges just like the liquid blushes. So yeah, we'll see. Need to test that more. Don't want to give you an inaccurate description. The Rare Beauty Liquid Luminizer in Outshine. Still not the greatest fan of these. I actually should put a little bit more over top of the blush, but that's just not my favorite formula. The Koki Eyebrow Pencils, a little creamier than I normally prefer, but they got the job done. I am intrigued with this Ardell Brow Glue. It truly is a brow glue. Like my brows are not falling. So if you are looking for a heavy duty, my brows aren't gonna move product, this, and you absolutely need to use it with the spatula to get the full effect. But I would say this is one of the pretty heaviest duty brow products that I've used. So it certainly worked. That's a very good product as well. I do really like the Hourglass eyeshadow sticks. They are more on the sheer side, but I think there definitely is an audience of you who will enjoy this. Very subtle, very pretty, very creamy. I want to test these alone to see how they do longevity wise. I think these ColourPop Legend of Cora eye shadows. Again, need to test these underneath powder, but I think it's really neat that ColourPop's coming out with these. The new cream gel eyeliners seem really, really creamy. We'll see if they last longer than the other ones. I think I'm going to pop the shade Honey Dude, which I have like three of these. They're so good in the waterline, and I'll see if these last longer. I'll have to keep you updated. Okay, I'll leave a note and let you guys know, but it did make my eyes look brightened. I do like this shade a lot, and I had no issue going over the waterline. Loving the Kiss the Muses lashes. This is a new favorite collection of mine from Kiss. I also use this YSL lipstick, which is really shiny, very pretty, definitely very luxe. You know, this formula isn't the end-all be-all, but it's nice if you want to spend a little extra money for this beautiful packaging. And then this white wow. Lip gloss was fine. I, and it's affordable if you like Sesame Street. I think the collection is kind of random, but it added a nice shine and it's not sticky or anything. So anyways, we'll continue to keep you guys updated on these. So definitely make sure you're subscribed to my channel for these to be featured in speech reviews. And thanks for hanging out with me and applying some makeup. I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.